Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making an old-fashioned walnut cake. This is a very unique and delicious recipe that's good any time of the year and I hope that you'll enjoy it. This recipe comes from an old church cookbook that I have and I tried it last fall. It was a big hit and so I hope that you'll take time to make it whether it's for your family on a weeknight, maybe your next family gathering, or a potluck at church or wherever you might take this to. I hope that you'll enjoy it. You'll see me showing the ingredients here one by one, but if you'll take time to look in the description box below, you'll see all the measurements and the ingredients listed out along with the baking instructions so you can copy this recipe down for future reference. So take time to do that and I hope you enjoy this cake. A couple of quick notes about this recipe. The original recipe calls for walnut flavoring I could not find it at my local grocery stores. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon or maybe a store around you. So I substituted almond flavor in their extract instead. It turned out great and I really couldn't tell that much of a difference. It gave it a good nutty flavor, but I'm sure walnut would give it a different flavor. And so try it both ways, see which one you like best for your family and let that be the way you make it in the future. And so you're seeing me here, put all of my ingredients into one mixing bowl. And that really is one nice part about this recipe. Uh, you can use one bowl, mix everything together, and even better, you don't have to break your KitchenAid mixer out or your hand mixer out. You get to use the good mixer that God gave you, which is your arm, and a good strong spoon or a spatula and mix everything together. It's really not difficult to do, and it's very easy, simple, and a very interesting cake. A couple of other things I will say uh, you'll notice in my measuring cup, and you'll see it in the ingredient list, the icing that you'll make calls for a third a cup of cold coffee. What I did was I brewed in my just normal coffee pot uh, coffee earlier in the day and measured it out in the measuring cup, covered it with some saran wrap, put it in the refrigerator, and when I needed it for the icing, I pulled it out and it was ready. You can use whatever kind of coffee you like. I use Maxwell House. Folgers, whatever's on sale. So just whatever coffee you like, use it and you'll enjoy it. A helpful tip that I've learned works pretty well is I always, when making a cake, will mix my dry ingredients first, unless the recipe says otherwise. Um, and so what I did here was I mixed together my flour, my sugar, and then I added the vegetable oil in, or canola oil, whatever you prefer, uh, into my dry ingredients first before adding my milk. And that just makes it easier to incorporate the ingredients together. It works well for me. I suggest you try it and you might find you like it too. The recipe I'm using, the instructions were to beat for two minutes, scraping the bowl frequently, then add your eggs and continue beating two more minutes. And it specifically says the batter will be thin. And so you'll see me here beating and beating and beating. And I, I might have timed it just watching the kitchen clock, but more than anything, I was trying to make sure that all of my ingredients were incorporated well, didn't see anything dry or lumpy on the sides or in the bowl. So just make sure at least two minutes to beat your bowl of ingredients frequently. Then add your eggs and then beat two more minutes just to make sure everything's incorporated well together. So 
So this is the part of the recipe where after beating the ingredients by hand for about two minutes, I add a couple of fresh eggs. Uh, we do have chickens here at our house, so we get fresh eggs every day. Um, but just use your regular store-bought eggs if you don't have fresh eggs. And again, once you add the eggs to the mixture, beat again vigorously for about two minutes. And again, the batter is going to be thin. It might look thin to you, but hey, that's what the recipe says. And I can promise you this, if you follow the recipe and you cook it like it says, this will be one cake that you will enjoy time and time again. What you see me reach for next is Baker's Joy. Baker's Joy is something I can find at about every grocery store around me. And it's a combination of cooking spray and flour. And it's perfect for when you're baking cakes to make sure that your cake uh, doesn't stick to the pan when you try to release it and have that frustrating process that can sometimes happen when you bake cakes. I, I find Baker's Joy every time I've used it has worked well for me. You can always do the old-fashioned way and just grease it by hand and flour it by hand. Um, so either way, make sure that the pan that you use for this recipe that you grease and flour it. The recipe does say you can use either two 8-inch pans or one sheet cake pan, which is what I did. And so um, I put it in the cake pan, the sheet pan. I baked it at 350 for about 30 minutes and I set it over to the side to cool while I make the homemade butterscotch icing. The next thing we're gonna do is make the homemade butterscotch icing. Again, the ingredients for this icing are listed below in the description box, but you'll need you a medium-sized pot and what you'll do and what I did is I cut the heat on my burner about medium, medium high, and I put all of the ingredients for the icing together into this pot. And so this is just a combination again of margarine, butterscotch morsels, that cold coffee that we talked about earlier that was in the refrigerator, I use it. And again, it calls for walnut flavoring like I said earlier, didn't have walnut flavoring, couldn't find it. I used almond instead. But if you can find walnut, try it and see how it turns out. But again, I like the almond pretty good and everybody else that ate it did. So try the almond too, if that's something that you have already in your pantry. And then it also calls for a box of powdered sugar. So the recipe that I'm using calls for one box of powdered sugar. My grocery store that I was shopping at did not have boxes of powdered sugar. All I could find was a 32 ounce bag. So the research that I did online said that the equivalent of a one pound box of powdered sugar would be three and a half cups. And so that's what I used. I just measured out from the bag that I purchased three and a half cups of powdered sugar and it worked perfectly. So that's what I would recommend that you try as well. And so what you're gonna do is before you add the powdered sugar, the other ingredients, you're gonna bring it to a bowl in the pot. Make sure that your morsels are melting and melted, but make sure you're stirring it well so that it doesn't scorch to the bottom of the pot. That's the last thing you wanna do is to serve burnt frosting on a very good cake. Uh, certainly it'd be a cake people wouldn't forget, but I'm not really sure that's how you and I wanna remember foods we make. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring all of this to a bowl let it cool slightly first before you add your powdered sugar. So this is the point where my frosting was uh, boiling. So I added the powdered sugar to it and I took a whisk and I beat it real well until it was very smooth like frosting should be. And then what I did, and you don't have to do this, um, but it is suggested in the recipe if you wanna add them. I took some black walnuts uh, or just walnuts, whatever you can get at your grocery store. And I took them and I chopped them up rather coarsely um, I used whole walnuts. You can probably already find them at your grocery store chopped. Um, but again, I just took a handful of them. 
I didn't measure it out. If I was a guessing and a betting man, I'd probably say somewhere around a quarter of a cup of chopped walnuts. But what you're gonna do is take your frosting like you see me doing here, and you're just gonna take it and pour it all over the top of your cake. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm dispersing it evenly. It's gonna be thinner because it is hot. You just brought it to a boil, but that's okay. Once it cools, it's gonna make a beautiful, beautiful cake. If you do choose to make this recipe, I really hope that you'll come back in the comments section and let me know how it turned out. Uh, this is, again, a unique cake between the flavoring of the butterscotch, the coffee, and then just the cake itself. It's a very, very good cake that I know that you'll enjoy it. So come back and let me know how it is. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check back in with us from time to time. We'll make sure to keep videos coming weekly on country living or good recipes that you'll be able to enjoy with your friends and family and other people you love. Uh, so just take those walnuts you chopped up, sprinkle them evenly on top of the cake so that at least everybody gets some with their slice of cake. And again, I hope you enjoy this and thanks for watching. Come back and see us.